Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. Now, I watched the Turkish Grand Prix kind of late today because I had a lot of chores to do, but I did eventually get round to watching it and it is now one o'clock in the morning and I'm going to talk about it. Like the weather conditions, it was a bit of a damp race, but there's still plenty going on and it was an interesting race for the championship and we had Valtteri Bottas win his first race of the year, so, you know, good news for him but we'll get into the action in the video but I just want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel we're getting very very close to 500 now so if you're watching this and you haven't please hit that subscribe button thank you very much let's begin This has been a good weekend. There's been plenty of racing action to watch, and that kind of culminated with the Formula One race. I also went to a car boot sale and got a couple of cars. I've got Petter Solberg's Subaru, which is a. Uh, it's actually a bit scratched, but it's quite nice. And I also have a Porsche 911 GT1, which says it's for 1995 hour, 24 hours of Le Mans on the bottom but I don't think it is I think it's a 96 one so and I paid 50p for both those bad boys bargain of the century they'll be going in the display at the back at some point I'll do it later now Formula 1 this was an interesting race Hamilton obviously qualified first but he took on new components in his engine so he got a 10 place grid drop so he started 11th and that left Bottas on par with Verstappen 2nd. Red Bull were running a one-off Honda inspired livery. Didn't think much of it to be honest. It's different but it was. I think they could have gone all the way with it. Wasn't that impressed to be honest. Now the actual race. It was a damp one. And everyone was on intermediate tyres. I think it actually kind of spoiled the action because Turkey usually is capable of giving a good Grand Prix. This one was, it was interesting but not exciting. It had its moments and we'll get to those. But the most interesting thing was Lewis Hamilton starting in the midfield and Carla Sainz right at the back. Both drivers made up places pretty quickly. Lewis Hamilton got stuck behind Yuki Tsunoda for about eight laps and Sonoda did put up a really good defense probably better than anyone else Hamilton passed meanwhile Carlos Sainz was carving through the field to start with but he got stuck kind of in the midfield around the halfway point out front Bottas he led the whole race with no issues whatsoever Verstappen was pretty much in his own race behind him Leclerc had a great race he kept up for most of it he was in and around the podium positions and he was sort of unlucky not to get on the podium. The start was a bit of a cluster. Gasly hit Alonso and I think at some point Alonso hit Mick Schumacher and Latifi spun as well. That was pretty much all the action we got in this race. There was a spirited defence from Perez holding off Hamilton which you know for four or five corners they were very very close to each other. Probably lucky not to make contact. And this is one of the best races Sergio Perez has had for Red Bull. Because his job in this race was really to hold off Hamilton. And he did that fantastically. And Red Bull could not have asked more of him really in this race. He has really helped with Staffan's championship. Hamilton was... It was strange because Mercedes clearly had the best car in the field. And Hamilton wasn't really able to utilise that. I think getting stuck early on using his tyres up didn't really help. I think it was the right call to pit him. Um, I think Pirelli have already said that his tyres were pretty much on the limit. So if he'd gone over that limit and the tyres had gone off or burst, whatever, deflated, his championship would have deflated with him. So if something had happened, a puncture or something, and he'd fallen further back, it would have been worse. I think if he'd stayed out, even if the tyres hadn't gone completely, there was a chance he was probably going to get 
caught by Perez and Leclerc anyway. Maybe even Gasly and Norris. So I think on I know he was angry and he left some very rude messages, but I think the team made the right decision for him. Um, other than that, Mercedes, it was kind of a good race for them. Bottas winning. We don't know how much more of that he's going to do in his career. This may be the last time we ever see Valtteri Bottas win a race, as far as we know. He's only got, is it five or six races left of this year to get another one for Mercedes. After that, it depends where his career takes him. So I'm glad he won, and it sort of pushed him away from Norris and Perez in the battle for third. He's got a bit of a gap now. Perez did finish ahead of Norris, who maybe didn't. McLaren weren't really on the pace this weekend. And Norris, he was kind of stuck behind Gasly the whole race. So they were sixth and seventh, which is a good result for Gasly. Kind of been expecting more from Norris given recent performances. It is more unfortunate than anything. I think he'll do... If he manages to hold on to fourth in the championship, he'll do a fantastic job. But even if he doesn't, I'm sure he'll get fifth at least. And that is a fantastic result for him. Uh, there's not really much more to say than that. Nothing really happened. Uh, Sebastian Vettel went on dries at one point, and that turned out badly. That was quite funny. Although he didn't spin, which is unusual. He actually managed to keep it all going in a straight line. But no points for Sebastian Vettel this weekend. Actually, I think in the top 10, 8 of the point scorers are the top are in the top 10 in the championship. So the people who score points, you kind of expect to score points. So obviously, Verstappen is now in the championship lead by only a slim margin. Hamilton is 6 points behind him. It's still a very interesting title battle, and we're going to see how that unfolds over the next few races. Behind him, Bottas obviously has taken... A good hold of third from Norris and Perez. Sainz and Leclerc very close in the championship. I think there's just half a point in it, which is pretty incredible given that we're most of the way through the year. I think Carlos Sainz has done a fantastic job this year. He's finished inside the points at every race bar two, where he finished both in 11th. So it's an incredible run of results for him. Very, very consistent. Charles Leclerc, it's a good season for him as well, given where, given where Ferrari are. It's sort of they haven't really had many top results so Charles Leclerc has probably got the pick of them and it's kept it very very close between him and Carla Sainz that's sort of one of the more interesting battles to watch is who's going to be sick from the championship between the two Ferrari drivers outside of them we had Gasly score points again Norris Sainz we had Lance Stroll ninth so it's not been a great year for him but he is picking up points here and there Esteban Ocon he's lucky he won that race because without it, I think he'd be 14th in the championship. He got another point here as well. We had both Alfa Romeo's just outside the points with Ricardo who had a bad weekend. Sonoda who sadly dropped down. Russell, Alonso, Latifi, Vettel and the two Haases. There are no massive surprises from Turkey. It's going to be more interesting to see what happens later in the championship. I don't know if Lewis Hampton's going to have to take more parts for his engine and take more penalties it seems strange that he only got a 10 place grid penalty for replacing one part I think they might as well have gone changed the whole engine take all the grid penalties now and started from 20th because honestly he'd have probably ended up 5th anyway so other than that Mercedes have pulled out slightly a little bit more in the constructors but that's still pretty close that's one bad way to Mercedes away from being very, very tight. So yeah, Turkey. Not really much went on. It's... As I said, I think there's only five or six races left. I can't actually remember off the top of my head. This was not one of the classics. And... We've got some interesting tracks coming up. It's, I'm, we've got Saudi Arabia, I know, is coming up. America... I think we're ending Yas Marinas. Qatar. We're racing in Qatar as well now. So, this I, I'll be racing at Bahrain. I can't remember. No, completely blank. So, yeah, I'm sure there's some interesting races coming up. I'll be back with more Formula 1. Please subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a good one.